Today we've got a new tool to make it easier to build Marlin in Visual Studio Code. Let's have a look! Hey guys, Brian here with The First Layer, the show that teaches you all about the world of 3D printing, and today is no different. Today we have a brand new plugin that has been developed by Scott Latine, and apologies if I've mispronounced your name, but he is the maintainer of Marlin firmware, and he has developed a little plugin for Visual Studio Code to make it easier to build for your printer without having to guess the processor. So let's go ahead and install all the software from scratch and take a look. Okay, before we install Visual Studio Code, we're going to want to go to python.org and download the latest version of Python. As of this recording, it's Python 3.8.1, and I'm going to get you to download that, follow the installation instructions, everything default is fine, and then reboot your computer. Now that we have the latest version of Python installed, we'll want to go to code.visualstudio.com and download the latest Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. Just click the download link on the main page and it will take you to the installer. Download, install, and once completed, launch Visual Studio Code. Now when you first open Visual Studio Code, there's not a lot of information on screen. What we're going to want to do is go over to the fifth from the bottom icon, which is labeled Extensions, click it, and search up Auto Build Marlin. The top link should be for the Auto Build Marlin interface. We're going to click on the green Install button. Now once the Auto Build Marlin is installed, it's also installed the Platform I.O. extension automatically, so no need to install that one separately. Once Platform I.O. is automatically installed, we're going to want to go over to the Quick Access Open Project button. Click it and browse to your Marlin directory. Now before you open the folder, make sure that the folder contains the Platform I.O.ini file. If you're not seeing this file, you're probably in the wrong directory. Once you see the Platform I.O.ini, go on and click Open. Alright, once we've opened up our folder, you'll see that it goes to configuration.h and usually reloads the platform IO home window. We can go ahead and close that. We won't need to look at that for now. So go ahead and make all of your changes in configuration.h. If you do need a default configuration file, go ahead and check out our previous video linked above to show you how to find the default configurations. Once we've configured our printer, we're going to go ahead and click on the M icon for Marlin build on the left side. And then we're going to have a couple of buttons at the top here. We've got a hammer for build, an arrow up for upload, a bug for upload with traceback and debugging, and a garbage can to clean the build directories. So let's go ahead and build our version of Marlin. So click on the hammer and let it go. All right, once we have a successful firmware compilation, we can go ahead and upload it directly to the printer, either via USB or via SD card, depending on how your board accepts firmware. And that's all there is to it. Now you've got a fully functioning Marlin build with only a press of one button. Now there were a few bugs I did encounter when installing this. However, all, they were all identified on the GitHub. So I'll put a link in the description below of the fixes required if they're not resolved by the posting of this video. However, it did shortcut a lot of items and I no longer need to remember what processor is on that board. I just have to identify my board in configuration.h and the Marlin auto build application takes care of it all. And that's it for this week, guys. I wanted to thank Richard, Jess, Jerry, and all of you for supporting us through all these fun times. It's a great community. And remember that the first layer is your foundation to a great print. We'll see you next time.